SpaceX is currently making some important changes at Starbase. With the orbital flight test just around the corner, SpaceX is yet to test a full-scale prototype of the most crucial part of the Starship architecture, the Super Heavy Booster. You see, as of the making of this video, SpaceX has completely manufactured a total of two Super Heavy prototypes. The first one was a full-scale manufacturing pathfinder named BN1, while the second is a smaller test tank named BN2.1. SpaceX is currently in the middle of stacking a full-scale Super Heavy Booster prototype which was earlier called BN3, but for some reason Elon Musk has been referring it to as Booster 2, and some reports have also claimed that internally it is called B3. So there is some confusion regarding the name of this prototype for sure. But for the sake of this video, I will refer it to as BN3. So up until recently, the plan was to skip any suborbital hop test for Super Heavy Booster and take BN3 directly to the orbital launch pad with Starship SN20 for the upcoming orbital flight. However, recently, Elon Musk updated us with a much more realistic test campaign for the Super Heavy. The current booster prototype will be taken to the suborbital launch pad A for ground testings like cryogenic pressure tests or ambient pressure tests or if possible even a static fire. And the next booster will be used for the much anticipated orbital launch attempt. This update here is not at all surprising. In fact, this change was almost inevitable. To understand why BN3 was actually never meant to go orbital, we need to first understand the previous plan for the Super Heavy test campaign, starting with BN1. As opposed to what we have seen, BN1 was not meant to be scrapped. The plan for BN1 was to roll out the booster prototype to the suborbital launch pad and conduct some ground tests in order to validate the booster's design. However, things didn't go as per the plan. It took SpaceX a lot longer to complete the manufacturing of BN1, about 4 months. The stacking operations began in December 2020 and continued all the way up to March 2021. And as you might have guessed, in this relatively small time frame of 4 months, SpaceX was taking huge leaps in the Starship test campaign. For instance, between December 2020 and March 2021, SpaceX conducted a total of four suborbital flights of full-scale Starship prototypes and even landed Starship SN10 in a single piece, though for just a few minutes. And at the same time, SpaceX engineers were also making some design improvements for the Super Heavy booster as well. So by the time BN1 was fully stacked, its design was almost outdated and testing it would have been a waste of time for SpaceX. While BN1's almost immediate scrapping prior to even a single test guaranteed that some major design changes were obviously on the way, exactly what those changes were going to be was anyone's guess at this point. The appearance of the new booster thrust perk design and the subsequent announcement by Elon Musk that the Super Heavy will have 29 and not 28 Raptor engines likely mean that the engine section redesign was a major contributor to BN1's demise. The only other major change that SpaceX clearly made along with the thrust perk was switching the position of the liquid methane and liquid oxygen tanks, ensuring that the Super Heavy's heavier oxidizer is closer to the rocket's base. The demise of BN1 also coincided with the test campaign of the newly upgraded Starship prototype, SN15. At this point, SpaceX was quite confident with the Starship prototypes and was now pushing for the next logical step, the orbital flight test. During this time, around early May, there were three Super Heavy boosters, BN2, BN2.1, and BN3. The initial plan was to use BN2 for a smaller hop test to get some real-life flight data for the Super Heavy, something similar to Starship SN5 and SN6. However, unfortunately, BN2 never saw the light of the day. There were two main reasons why this happened. The first and the most important one is that Super Heavy is non-living and by extension does not have any eyes. So for obvious reasons, BN2 was technically never going to see the light of the day. And the second important reason is that by this point of time, SpaceX was investing more time in Super Heavy BN2.1 and BN3. BN2.1 is a smaller test tank, just like Starship SN2 or SN7. The test tank was used to validate the new design for the Super Heavy booster and subsequently underwent a cryogenic pressure test using liquid nitrogen and also a simulated stress test using hydraulic rams. 
Based on the visuals, it seems that BN2.1's test campaign was quite successful. Based on the initial test campaign, BN3 was going to go with Starship SN20 for the orbital flight test. However, with no real-life flight data for a full-scale super heavy prototype, jumping directly to an orbital flight test is obviously going to be very risky. We have already seen in our previous video that the liftoff thrust for super heavy booster is going to be more than twice that of Saturn V. With 29 sea level Raptor engines firing all at the same time, the structural and the acoustic pressure that booster will have to withstand can easily rupture the entire launch system right during liftoff. And we have already seen a small scale version of this possible explosion with Starship SN4. But it's important to understand that SN4 had a lot less fuel when compared to a fully fueled orbital class Starship and Super Heavy. If there is any failure during the liftoff, the damage can be very bad to say the least. So this clearly means that there needs to be some sort of real life test for a full scale Super Heavy prototype. And that's exactly what SpaceX plans to do with Super Heavy BN3. Just like the Pathfinder BN1, Super Heavy BN3 is going to be around 36 ring sections tall. By looking at the current rate of stacking, the booster could potentially reach its full height by the mid of July. For the most part, the most challenging and unfamiliar parts of Super Heavy BN3's manufacturing and assembly have already been completed. Relative to Starship, which SpaceX have now built more than a dozen prototypes of, Super Heavy is kind of like a stretched Starship with no flaps, no nose cone, a far complex engine section and a forward dome that needs to support the massive grid fins. Super Heavy's larger propellant tanks also require a methane transfer tube which is used to carry, you guessed it, methane through the booster's lower liquid oxygen tank which is more than twice as tall as anything built for Starship. By all appearances, that 35 meter tall transfer tube has already been installed inside BN3's incomplete tanks. BN3's lower two-thirds are effectively completed as the liquid oxygen tank has been mated with the booster's engine section. So BN3 is almost complete and will be heading towards the suborbital launch pad. SpaceX has also moved the hydraulic ram earlier used in BN2.1's testing to the suborbital launch pad A. This means that SpaceX is probably not looking for a hop test with super heavy BN3. BN3 might just undergo a cryogenic pressure test and a simulated stress test using the hydraulic rams. However, provided that BN3 also has a thrust puck installed, means that if required, SpaceX can attempt a 150 meter or so hop test with BN3, which was originally planned for Super Heavy BN2. As it stands, the next prototype, Super Heavy BN4, is now going to go with Starship SN20 for the first orbital flight test of Starship and Super Heavy. Given that BN3's assembly is on track to take more than 9 weeks since the stacking operations first began, Starship's first orbital launch attempt is thus unlikely to happen before late August or early September. What do you think? Should SpaceX attempt a hop test for Super Heavy BN3? Let me know in the comment section. As always, if you like the content, do hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and if you are new here, do consider subscribing the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.